Okay, so this is going to be an actual channel update here, and we're going to go over a couple things. The um, reason I'm making this video is uh, the three-year mark has just come up. Um, my first YouTube video was about three years ago. That's also about the same time that I started getting into DCC. So my progression's pretty much been all over YouTube pretty much over the past three years of where I started and where I am now. Um, with that, um, every single video up until this point has been done with cell phones, um, LG V10, LG V20, a couple Samsungs along the way. Um, <clears throat> typically I don't do any scripting at all in my videos, it's all kind of point and shoot on the fly. Um, even if I sometimes bumble words, I don't really go and bother to reshoot the whole video, I just kind of upload it as is. Um, and I don't really do any editing at all, so pretty much it's just a raw feed of what I'm feeling about something. But uh, this video is more to do with where things are going. Um, so at this point, I'm currently unhappy a little bit about the, the room setting here, um, having trains on the floor. Um, <clears throat> I would like them to be, you know, on an actual layout. Building the actual layout's been something I've been thinking about for about the past year but it hasn't happened yet but I'm here to tell you today that it is actually happening now so um, there'll be some documentation of that as it goes along in its process um, I did buy a couple things last night which I uh, took some video of and you'll see that here in a bit um, but uh, I, I do want to do some things with the channel <clears throat> it, it's still going to be kind of uh, point and shoot on the fly, but it is going to be a little more polished, hopefully. Um, I would, I mean, I have set some goals for myself as far as views and subscribers that I would like to have by end of 2017. And uh, I think they're goals that I can achieve um, as long as I put out better content and content that looks pretty nice. <clears throat> so with that, a couple things that I'm going to be improving here. Um, actually this video is the first one that's being shot on my new camera which I'll show you here in a bit and um, again the layout is uh, starting um, so there probably won't be any new videos about trains for uh, likely even up to a couple weeks I'm not really sure how long all of this is gonna take I've never done this before so this is all new to me um, I don't even necessarily have all the tools just yet to build the layout that I need, so there's going to be a lot of Home Depot and Lowe's trips here over the next couple weeks. Hopefully it, it isn't that actual long. Um, also, um, as far as new content, once the layout is built, and or at least to the point where I can run some trains, ideally I'd like to get out at least one to two videos a month. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably never going to be a channel that has the ability to push out three or four videos a month about new products. Um, I have the time, um, but I don't have that kind of budget. Um, <clears throat> trains are a hobby for me. They're something that I spend disposable income on just as many other people do, and there is a limited amount of that. And of course, changes in lifestyle and other bills and things that come up in life, sometimes that gets a little more limited. And, you know, you don't want to go too crazy and spend all your money on your hobbies and not be able to pay some bills. Um, and also, it's good to have some money saved up for other things that may happen, which I've been guilty in the past of sometimes ignoring those things. But not anymore. It's not something I'm going to do. And I'm also not going to do it for uh, the sake of buying models just to review it and put myself into any kind of financial stress. That's just not something I'm willing to do. Um, but I, I think, you know, pushing out one to two videos a month is reasonable and within my budget. Ideally, I'd like it to be more, um, but I think conservatively that's a pretty good estimate of what I can do. And also have the video quality much better than what it is now so that you can actually see the detail on these things that I'm showing you. Um, and also, um, you know, just get the experience of it a little bit better than what it's been before because a lot of stuff I've had some nice models or some nice info but a lot of times it's been pretty blurry or you couldn't see actually what it was uh, focusing problems so hopefully with the new camera here those things will work themselves out um, but next we'll take a look at some of the uh, other things that I picked up here
Well, 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 look at what we have here. Looks like I actually started to become a serious YouTuber, or at least trying to anyway. So I picked up a couple things today. Um, one is going to be uh, this little guy here. Came with the uh, little tripod holder thingy. But it hooks onto your phone. And then there's a kind of a universal tripod mount there. And then it goes on to this, which I can use as a small tripod, or you can kind of grip it this way to move it around. So you can do both things with that. Um, then also, of course, the camera itself um, did probably about two weeks worth of watching YouTube videos, trying to decide which way I wanted to go. I know that my camera hasn't been giving me uh, the best results on my phone. Um, so this probably will be at least one of the last uh, videos that's probably shot exclusively on my cell phone. I've um, been doing that for quite some time, but it's just a, it's not cutting it in the lighting environment that I have here. Um, there's some things I can do to improve that, but even at the uh, autofocus just isn't that good. So every review that I watched um, pretty much said that this was the best point and shoot that you could get for YouTube. Um, and it also has the uh, flip out screen, which this just flips up, which is very hard to do one handed. And of course, you can, you know, see yourself that way for whatever you're recording, or you can place it on a tripod. And of course, it flips back around there. Um, the still shots, I guess, are around 20 megapixel on it. Um, didn't really get it for the still shot ability. Got it more so for the, uh, the videoing part aspect of it. Um, so that's kind of why I picked this up. <clears throat> so hopefully some future videos are going to start getting shot on that as soon as I can sort of figure out what I'm doing. Um, and that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. And then also, of course, starting to build the layout in here. So that's something that I really want to start happening here soon. But, uh, so a little more serious now. And I looked at some of the uh, DLSR options, like the uh, Canon T7i was something I was looking at doing, but that's quite a bit more expensive than this one, which even this one was way more than I wanted to spend. Um, that money could have gone towards a lot of other things. Uh, but I think ultimately, if I don't get the results from this one that I'm looking for, I'll probably either return it or sell it at the end of the year. Or maybe if I get really good with this, then I'll uh, maybe graduate up to like a Canon T7i or something else in those lines. Um, I'd love to have a device that just does everything well, shoots video well in here for making YouTube videos and also something I could take outside and do uh, like rail fanning videos with or... Um, one problem I have with my phone is if, unless I'm on top of practically what I'm taking a picture of, it doesn't really come out good. If I'm really close, it looks awesome. But if it's something that's far away, like if I drive by an Ola yard and I'm trying to take a picture of an engine that isn't right up next to the road, it's just a little tiny dot on my screen or it gets so pixelated because my phone can't zoom that far. And I don't expect that this would be a whole lot better on that part. That's kind of something that I need an actual real camera for, but just taking a look and playing around with one, the uh, settings were a little more than I could digest. So I think once I get a little better with this, then maybe next year I'll graduate into one of those. So we'll see how this works out, and I'm going to try to start doing some videos on this now and learning how to use it. And I will probably be getting some uh, lighting, kind of like, I guess they almost look like umbrellas. To try to improve the lighting in here, uh, make it a little more studio-like, just for the meantime until I actually start to build the layout.
And I'm at Home Depot buying wood. Which I have no idea how this is all going to fit in my car. Well, I don't know how this is all going to fit in there. Those are 8 feet long. I have leather interior that I'm trying not to scratch up or rip. And somehow that box has also got to get in there. I got it in there. Sometimes you really shouldn't like look back at uh, life with regrets and sometimes you just can't even if you wanted to. So I'll make it home like this. I don't think it's going anywhere. So taking a look at the wood I picked up here. And also picked up a table saw, which is what I'll be using to cut all these up to length. Um, I don't currently have a jigsaw or a circular saw. Those are things that I'd like to pick up, but I don't really have them just yet. Didn't really get any screws yet. Um, I prefer to use screws rather than nails. Um, just because I feel like if I mess something up, it'd be easier to undo it. Um, but we'll take a look in the train room here. So, I pretty much cleared everything out of here. So this space here, which used to be filled with uh, kind of this space here, I would use for like the laptop and a couple other things, and then this was kind of the other half. Uh, this is all blank. I'm going to start this wall first. It's roughly about 11 and a half feet from side to side here. So I plan on going out about two feet. So the... Uh, Bench work is going to be a 6x2 uh, kind of section, and the other one will kind of be more like 5.5 feet or so, um, and then also 2 feet. Um, starting on this wall, just because there's no windows in the way, um, once I get over here, I do kind of have to work around the windows, and ideally I would like the top sheet to be just above this which is about 33 or so inches off the ground um, that's going to take a little bit of work there but I'd like to go above the window sills that way I don't have those kind of in the way and um, probably this second wall here will be where the next one goes in and for now this wall is kind of where I just have all the models stacked up for right now uh, those will probably get flip-flopped here on the other side once some of that starts to build. In the corner there is probably going to be some type of yard turntable, what have you. And kind of the same thing over here. Uh, this door doesn't really need to be used. So I really only need to have one entrance into the room. <clears throat> so this will likely be some type of staging yard also and then there'll probably be some type of long section that links up with the other part over here that's kind of the loose idea at this point i would love to do things with uh, multiple levels helixes elevation changes uh, that's probably a little bit further off uh, but that's kind of it for that part for right now